We are in studio with uh, Bill and Gil, Bill Stubblefield, John Gilstrap, and uh, a plate of cookies has made its way here. And i got to tell you something. Usually when the guest brings in food, they'll bring it to me, and then I will display it uh, in its pristine state to the camera so uh, the guest gets full credit for bringing in a good-looking tray of food. This tray never made it past the front door. Gilstrap and Stubblefield, who apparently didn't eat over Thanksgiving okay. break at all, uh, attacked this dish of cookies as if it was uh, the last bit of food they'll ever receive. Well, before that, as soon as Stacy walked in the door, we were there to intercept her because <laughs> normally you're right. It goes to your end of the table, and we don't get anything. So it's a, Here's what yeah. bothers me. We ran out of commercial. <laughs> I just had this much cookie left. So this has got to wait for a half hour before this, I can get to it. This last week was the premier eating week in the American culture and you guys are still ravenously hungry <laughs> they're well, really good cookies yeah uh yes we are but partly because of the wonderful cookies that stacy brings in it, we, just any ordin- ordinary cookie we would not do that but she brings in special cookies miss stacy roan from the boys and girls clubs good morning stace good morning how are you i am well although i i have to admit i probably need to call an injury attorney for the Shoving out of the way that I received so these cookies made their way well, to the Well, Rob, here's the, table. the thing. Yes, normally you take them down to your station at the end of the table where nobody can reach it. You show it to the camera, and then yes. you put it on the table behind you. Correct. So the and audience... then you don't share it with, the rest, with your other hosts. So, so the <laughs> audience doesn't hear you chew during the interview like they will now. Because there's nothing better than, Stace, <laughs> how, you, how you doing? Now, if Joe Ferretti is listening and watching today, you'll get a phone call. So he will represent you. I appreciate that, yeah. too. He's a good guy. <laughs> Stacy. let's talk. Let's talk turkey. Good morning. Yes, absolutely. I'd love to tell you what's happening in the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we're wrapping up the year in, um, in great form and fashion. Um, several of our staff a couple weeks ago went away to trauma-informed training. Mm-hmm. And as we recognize um, in our young people, um, you know, there's there are a lot of stressors out there, and we uh, we really focus our time in making sure that our young people are well. And um, so, so one way that we find out how we're doing in that arena is we survey the kids. We want to know how how are you doing? How do you feel about the club? Uh, we we really took safety on in this past year as a major initiative, and um, and looked in all three of our clubs. We brought in an outside. Um, independent um, ser- someone that could come in and and survey our facilities and make sure that they were safe and that our kids were well and and then we surveyed our kids to find out okay how do you feel about the experiences that you have in the club and some of my stats are 98 uh, percent of our children surveyed said that the club was a safe and positive environment that's great ninety five percent have a supportive adult relationship with someone in the club I always talk about when kids come to the club, they find their person. They don't just come in and say, well, you know, I'm here because I have to be. Um, They really, they intentionally seek out the person that they can't wait to run through the door and say, I had the best day. I got an A on this test and you helped me study for it. And I I appreciate that. Or they, or they run in and say, you know, my day was really hard. And I'm so, you know, and having a staff person say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we could make this day a little better for you. Um, that's special. Kids don't come because it, there's there's a new game in the games room. They they really come because that adult person takes the time to play that game with them, um, and and that's that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, other other things that they said: 97 percent said they felt safe to be themselves. They didn't have to put on um, a you know a veil of you know. In somebody else they don't have to pretend to be somebody that they're not and 94 percent said that the club accepts them for who they are um, and that says a lot especially in this day and time when young people are still trying to find out who who they are and what they want to do um, and you know one of the things that we encourage our young people to do is to get involved to volunteer to help um, to help the community out um, I my, my favorite kid story about helping community um, not last year, but um, the end of the year before, or or not this past year, but the end of the year before, um, there was a fire in one of the um, townhouse complexes in Charlestown. And one little girl came in and said, my friends live there and they don't have a place to live and we have to do something. So 
these cookies are not from that bake sale, but um, but that was what the kids decided to do. They said, we're going to have a bake sale and we're going to donate the money to the Red Cross. Um, so, you know, they had, I think they raised $900 and somebody else donated another 200 So they, you know, they donated $1,100 wow. to the Red Cross to help these families that were displaced. Uh, so, you know, we want our young people to understand that it's important to, um, to give back, but they can they couldn't do that if they didn't have the place in which to do it. Stacy, how many kids do you have on a regular basis, and what's the age of the kids? So young people between the ages of six and eighteen in Berkeley, Morgan, and Jefferson County uh, can come into the club and and become a member. And our, I need to get a current number on that bill because we just opened. Um, five school sites within the past month. So I know our numbers are increasing, and I don't have the exact stats. Um, Just a rough number. What's, what's the old numbers? And we're, I mean, we're probably over 150, 200 okay. now. Yeah. Um, and how many adults do you have volunteering? So that's where our, our organization is a little bit unique in that um, we don't – we can't depend on a strictly volunteer-based organization or operation because kids need to know that that person is going to be there for them every day. So um, traditionally, we have between um, 50 and 75 volunteers that come out throughout the year. Um, on our staff, it can be anywhere from 35 to 70, depending on the time of the year. Higher in the summertime because we're open for a full day. We and you know we need a lot more supervision because our um, our membership numbers increase, and we go on field trips, so we have to make sure that that staff to child ratio is um, is pretty secure. And what part of our safety initiative, and this is a Boys and Girls Clubs of America um, led initiative, is that we we need to make sure that our staff to child ratio is one to fifteen. Uh, and I'm sure you can imagine with all of the elevation in um, starting wages here in the Eastern Panhandle, finding not only the right staff, but the staff that we can afford that are the right staff has really become a, it's become a challenge. Yeah, I do not want to single out one person because I realize a lot of people make a contribution. Uh, but Pat Murphy, who we see as part of the uh, chair of the Board of Education, has been a very active participant of the Boys and Girls Club for several, several years. Absolutely. Pat has over a 50-year history with the club. Um, in the past couple years, we've we've had to go through some renovations in our club, so his his level of volunteerism hasn't been as high as it has in the past, not because we, we don't want him to be there because we love Pat, um, but we have to make sure that his, his space is safe and secure and we can make sure that the young people can thrive in that space. Photography. For photography, yeah, yes. Yeah, um, absolutely. And he's had more national winners in Boys and Girls Club photography than probably any volunteer in the in the whole organization. And I think we opened the 5,000th club um, in the past couple months. So. Mm -hmm. You used a phrase early on that I've not heard before, and that is trauma-informed trauma training. What is that? Right. So young people, and I, I'm sure like through the Martinsburg Initiative and other organizations that come in and talk about ACEs, um, adverse childhood experiences, the young people that, that we're seeing um, more and more of are coming to us with many um, trauma or many of those issues that create trauma. Um, you know, it could be that a young person has is a child of divorce, and you know, there's there's some custody battle there. Or it could be that um, a young person has had a death in their family due to an opioid overdose, and that's um, that's one thing that we've um, we've really focused our efforts in on too is to provide. Um, a, a safe space and a place for young people who are w what we say opioid affected, meaning they have a parent that's in active recovery or they have a, a family member who's died of an overdose or they're with a relative caregiver and, or in foster care. So we want to make sure that young people have safe supports that help to provide um, a, a space where they can um, they know that they have that support. And some of that, some of that is it leads to training. We need to make sure that our staff and our team are trained to provide that level of support that helps a young person in, in their daily struggle, whatever that might be. Does that represent a, a large number of your, your members or attendees 
uh, among the kids? Are we talking I, double digit percent? I I would say yes. Um, you know, I any child. So let me preface that with any child in our community who needs a place to go after school is welcome in the club. We don't, re, you know, we try not to make or we try to make sure that it's a space where any young person can come, and we try to make sure that it's affordable. Uh, our monthly tuition is fifteen dollars a month. And um, and we also have a, a health care provider who, like a lot of the children who um, receive CHIP or are participate in that. And Unicare will pay that $15 a month um, for that child. So, you know, a lot of that is ensuring that young people and their families can afford that. If they come to us and that's still a struggle, then we try to work with them to make sure that it's a, it's a cost that they can afford. Stacy Rohn is our guest here on the program from the Boys and Girls Clubs. And part of the way of uh, making things affordable to people is your annual campaign where you raise money to help subsidize these things. Can you tell us about that? And while you're doing that, Dylan's going to bring the flyer up on our uh, television yeah. screen as well. Absolutely. So so what we did several years ago was try like how, how much does it truly cost? Because $15 a month does not cover the full tuition for a young person. So we looked at how much does it really cost for a young person to come to the club? And pre COVID numbers, it was $2,800 a year. And that was, um, that was if they were coming every day to every program and they could participate in our school year and summer program. Uh, so, what I'd started to do is I started to back out, okay, how much are we receiving in grants? How much are we receiving in foundations and other community support? And then what do our individual, what does our individual donor base provide and support in that? And after backing everything out, there was still about a thousand dollars per child that was not funded. So we really, over the past several years, tried to make sure that we were communicating that. So, Every donor who donated a thousand dollars or a portion thereof was really helping to support that one child in need. Um, so ways to support: you can go to our our um, Facebook page. You can also go to our website, which is www.bgcepwv.net, and you can support there. I need a drink. Excuse me. Go right ahead. <laughs> Lubricate. Yes, you're going to get the Demi Moore voice today. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, and there are a couple different ways to give on our on our website. Um, there's a donate button. Um, you can make a monthly recurring gift. And wow, does that not help us a lot? Because we're able to start to see that our community is engaged in what we do and they want to support us on a regular basis. Um, another way is a one-time donation, still on that donate button. And then the third way, and this is something that's super easy and doesn't require um, a lot of tending. You don't have to say, yes, I want to round up when you go to the grocery store. You can attach a credit card and set a monthly goal. Um, I think Rick and I, Rick and I do this. Rick, you don't know this, but we do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and we just set a monthly goal and it just automatically rounds up on the credit card. So when I go to the grocery store and someone says, oh, do you want to round up to support this? I, you know, I just take that as my opportunity to say, well, no, I already round up to Boys and Girls Club and it's attached to my credit card and it happens automatically. And when I get to that limit, it stops. And then at the end of each month, I get, a, there's a thank you text that comes out and I can go online and figure out, okay, what were my donations to Boys and Girls Club? And that happens either with a one-time monthly or, um, or round up donation. So that's one way to support. And then another, um, the Lights on the Lake project, and you'll see a lot of different nonprofits that are out there promoting Lights on the Lake. Um, what a neat opportunity. A couple, about a week or two weeks ago, I guess it is now, um, some of our um, families and our staff from Jefferson County went out to decorate the tree. United Bank supported our, or was the sponsor for our tree. And between now and December 30th, people can go on the Lights on the Lake um, site and you can select Boys and Girls Club and you can help us in two ways. One is you can like our, like our tree and then the other is for every dollar donated, we get a vote. So you can also go in and, and donate that way. Yeah, Lights on the Lake, I think, started last year, mm -hmm. and it uh, was a big hit, and I suspect it be even a bigger hit this year. And the nonprofits 
uniquely benefit from that. So that's what it's designed for. Uh, you gave the, the web page earlier, and that's the same time you need to take a drink of water. That's BCEP, whatever it was. It's boy, it's BGCEP. WV.net. So Boys Girls Club Eastern Panhandle West Virginia.net. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Easy to remember, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I, obviously, I copied the first two letters down and got them wrong, so I needed some help. So. No Stacey, worries. There, there's a lot of uh, obviously worthy causes this time of the year, especially. Uh, what makes the Boys and Girls Club stand out above uh, the other competing interests I have for my charitable dollar? I think it's because of that impact that we make on a daily basis to young people. Um, children, children vote with their feet. So when they walk through the door, that's their vote for us. That's the vote that says, I'm happy to be here. Um, from the moment they walk through the door and they see Miss Tony or Miss Shelley or Miss Monica in our clubs across the panhandle, um, to the moment they walk out the door with their parent when they don't want to go. Um, and when they want to stay at the club and they don't want to leave for the evening, um, that's special. Um, that really, that shows that we're working with our young people, we care about them, and we want to help them set a path for their future. Um, that's our end goal. We want a young person to come to the club to get assistance with homework, to get a meal, to start making plans and goals for what they want their life to look like when they reach adulthood. And that benefits our whole community. That's not just a, oh, it's a feel-good thing because we're helping the children. It's truly an intentional process where we're really working with young people to help them develop skills, to be public speakers. Um, we have young people who become Youth of the Year. They go on, they put a portfolio together, and they present that to a panel of judges and compete across the state um, with other Boys and Girls Clubs so they can be our our lead um, Boys and Girls Club representative that year. So in a couple months, we'll have that person selected, and um, hopefully I can bring her in or at least have her call in um, so you can meet her. Um, and then, you know, once they, once they go out into the world, we want them to make a, a considerable contribution to the work that they do. Um, a couple of our, our alumni are, I have a music producer that's in um, North Carolina right now who is doing amazing things. He bought his first house uh, and just got married a, a couple years ago. Um, another young lady who is who works in banking and is an investment banker and has her MBA. So it's exciting to see our young people go on and thrive and commit to a community where they're making a difference and they're making a difference because they learn some of those skills in the club good answer are you limited on the number of kids that can come in you say there's a one to 15 ratio so does there come a point where there's only so much staff so therefore we you have to say no to the next kid through the door um well, we don't do that because usually what will happen is if we if we get call-ins, our administrative team jumps in. Okay. And that's, you know, that's it's not ideal, but it's necessary. So we want always want to make sure that our club um staff are supported and that they they don't have to feel like, "Oh my goodness, there's there are too many children and I can't handle that." Now, you mentioned you get some money through uh, uh, through individuals. You also get money, I assume, through United Way, and mm -hmm. how about through the foundation? We do. So we, we receive some funding through both United Way and the foundation. And then, um, you know, we also have some other um, community groups that help to support. Um, one, one that I'm thinking of um, right now is the Key Club in uh, Washington High School last year did a dance. And because of the proceeds raised from the, it was the snowball, it was their winter formal, the proceeds from that, we were able to take the children to horse camp for the summer. So, you know, we try to find ways to give our children enriching experiences. And we also help to support other nonprofits. We partnered with Horses with Hearts um, to be able to offer that program. So it was definitely a way that we could um, fulfill our mission in a meaningful way. Uh, so there, you know, there are a variety of different organizations that do. Yeah, help. I'm I'm very very familiar with Horses with Hearts, but I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with the horse camp that you go to. Is that that is with Horses with Hearts? It is. So um, so a couple of years ago, Kay Barkwell um, and I talked about 
uh, some ways that we could partner. And one, um, one program that she was um, initiating was horse-powered reading. So she has a teacher who, um, who is trained in that. And then we also provide teachers who help to support that. And children learn to read. And then they also learn trust-based, um, they get a trust-based experience working with the horses. And, you know, some of our young people said, I never thought I would, I would touch a horse. That's such a big animal. Yeah. But they learn trust in that. Very neat experience that you are allowing these kids to uh, participate in and those who are contributing to the Boys and Girls Club directly helping to fund that. And uh, just about 30 seconds till we go to our final break, Stace, if you could give the information as to how to donate once again. Go to our website at bgcepwv.net. And I think, Rob, you had the flyer on screen. There's mm -hmm. also a QR code, um, if that's helpful. Yeah, Dylan, if you want to fire that up into the break one more time, just put that up on the screen. Everybody will see it is on our Facebook uh, stream or watching uh, live on TV10. If you're on the uh, radio side, just go by the instructions Stacy gave over the radio side. There, We're back with a final minute right after these. 